Well, good morning. And we welcome you to Oasis of Life Ministries. We are here under the power of God this morning. The Holy Spirit is moving. And it's moving right here for you as well. And God's got a message for us this morning. Amen. Strong, powerful message. That we need to be able to hear, understand it, and receive it. So, Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity we have to open up your word, to hear your voice. Holy Spirit, it's not my voice this morning, it's yours. I've given you the authority to use my voice in this place today to bring forth. What's on the heart of our Heavenly Father for us? So bring it forth in spirit and truth. You are the spirit of truth. You are the guiding light that we have to see the word for its truth. For the truth we know and the truth we speak and the truth we act upon shall set us free. There are those here this morning, Father, who need to be set free from sickness and disease. There are those here this morning and who are listening and looking in. They need to be delivered. They need to be delivered from alcohol, drugs, sexual perversion. They need to be delivered from the lies of the devil. Father, let this be their day. That they hear the word and understand the word. And as it penetrates their heart with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, deliverance shall come. And I thank you for it. I praise you for it. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have you got your Bibles with you? Yes. Amen. Amen. Turn to 3rd John. <clears throat> third epistle of John and if you will allow me this morning to walk in the anointing of the teacher I would appreciate it because that's what we need this morning we, we need good teaching yes amen, amen. amen. third John 2 beloved that's us yes He's talking to us. He's talking to all 222 of us here, and he's talking to all of you out there. Amen. Beloved, God loves you. Amen. Amen. Hope your neighbor and tell him, God loves you. This is God talking to us. I, and the King James says, wish. But there's a center note here, pray. I pray. But there's another word that would fit in there that I believe works without taking anything or adding to the word of God. I don't want to do that. I wouldn't do that. But let me read it this way. Beloved, I desire above all things. God is saying, I desire above all things that I could desire for you that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That's the call of this ministry. To bring prosperity to your soul, to bring health and prosperity. To all facets of life. Sometimes we think of health as just the physical body. But we need health mentally, emotionally. We need health in our relationships. In every area of life. And prosperity fits them all too. Sometimes we talk about prosperity. And we think of prosperity in just the financial area. But prosperity is every area of our life as well. And as I was thinking about this this morning, the Lord took me back to 1978. 
July of 1978, I got born again in the Kenneth Copeland meeting in Niagara Falls, New York. In November, Lynn and I went back. Her parents lived up there. We used to live up there. We went to visit her parents for Thanksgiving in November. And on Sunday morning, <coughs> we went to church with her parents. We were going to leave from church. And we are sitting there. And the pastor got up that went through the praise and worship. And the pastor got up there and he started to speak and talk. And he stopped. And he said, somebody has been hearing something from God or seeing a vision. You need to stand up and tell us what that was. Well, while we were singing and while we were doing things there in the church, I was seeing something. I was seeing, now I'm, what, four months old in this? And I'm seeing these shoulders that were inflamed and swollen, and you, you could tell it was fire, pain on them. And I just sat there. Her mother was sitting next to me, and all of a sudden I got an elbow in the ribs. She looks at me and she says, get up and tell them what you saw. And I was like, how does she know? But she poked me again, and I got up. I wasn't going to be poked a third time. <laughs> I got up. Listen. And I talked about the fact that somebody's shoulders were inflamed and swollen and painful. And right now, the rain and the, the consuming fire of God is healing that. When I finished, this lady in the front row, 80 years old, jumped up out of her seat, threw her hands in the air, and shouted, that's me, that's me, that's me. She said, I've had bursitis and arthritis in my shoulders so bad, and I felt so bad because I didn't feel I could worship God completely because I couldn't raise my hands and she's standing there with her hands in the air, and she did a little bit of 80 year old dance, and I'm telling you, that church went wild. <laughs> Folks, that's what God's after. He's after all of us to be walking in his the fullness of his power. Amen. The fullness of his anointing. It's raining in here today, folks. The Holy Spirit is pouring himself out. On all of us. What do you need this morning? It's here for you. And I believe the anointing is coming through that camera into your living rooms or your autos or wherever you're at hearing or listening to this. Today, I want you to turn now. I said all that. Turn just a couple pages back to 2 Peter chapter 1. What a chapter this is. I, I suppose, Brother Larry, we're not supposed to have favorites, <laughs> scriptures or passages in the Bible. But if we did, if we did, this would probably be my favorite right here. <laughs> Peter lays out in this chapter the outline to a successful Christian life. If we will follow Peter's advice here, we can walk in a completely anointed, successful Christian life. Shout amen to that. Amen. amen. All right, now. All right, look down to verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Again, just to remind you, prophecy is really God speaking to us. We, we get this, this prophecy that prophecy always has to 
be involved in something out in the future. But prophecy is really God speaking to us. Now, he'll speak to us sometimes about the future. But for the most part, God deals with us and speaks to us on the basis of life right now. Amen. Okay? Now, whereunto you do well that you take heed or listen closely as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. So we have three levels of light that comes to us, and we're going to talk about that a little bit here in, in a moment. The day star arise in your hearts. I looked this up in Strong's and Strong's didn't do a lot for me to identify this, so I looked it up in Thayer's Dictionary. Thayer's Greek Dictionary. And here, here's how Thayer defined this. The heart is the, is the seat of intelligence. Somebody might be sitting there thinking, well, that leaves so and so off. No, we're all intelligent. Come on. Yes. I said you're all intelligent. That ought to please you so. <laughs> We're intelligent in God's word. Yes. Why? We got the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thayer also identifies the heart as the center or core of your being. The place of understanding. And I like this last one. The place of divine influence. The place of moral, spiritual, excellent life. Oh, I like that. Let me, I got to read that again. The place of divine influence, moral, excellent, spiritual life. That's your heart. And for me, I've studied this and studied this, and I've heard, heard people say, some say, the heart is just your spirit. I believe the heart is your spirit and soul together. You are a spirit. You have a soul, and you live in the body. The soul is comprised of your mind, will, and emotion, and right here, Peter says, this light is going to shine in your heart in your spirit and soul. All right? Now, in this passage, as I said, Peter gives us an outline to the way to live a successful Christian life. Seven items he talks about that you and I need to do. Let's find them. First of all, verse 1, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Peter is identifying who he, who he is according to the scriptures. We need you to identify ourselves according to the scriptures. Amen? Yeah. Number one, you are the temple of the living God. Yes. Amen. Number two, you are the son of the creator. And number three, you are anointed by the Holy Ghost. Then he says, number two, obtain like precious faith. So we need to obtain faith. Then with us, now pay attention to the word through in, this, in these passages here. With us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The third thing we need is to understand that God is right. Amen. He's right in who he is. He's right in who he, what he says. He's right in what he does. And he is right in what he commands us to do and say. Number four, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through 
the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. We need to start walking in the grace and peace of God. And we do it through the knowledge that comes from God and Jesus our Lord. That's four. Number five is found in verse three. According as his divine power has given us unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So we need to understand something, life and godliness as God intends it. That's number five. And look, you're called to glory and virtue. I'll get to that in a moment. <clears throat> number four. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these, and we could actually say through these, you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So by these scriptures, by the promises of God, we are to partake of God's divine nature. It's number six. And then in number seven, and beside this, giving all diligent, giving every full effort to add to your faith. So the faith you obtained up here needs now to be added to. So faith, folks, studying, learning, walking, living by faith never stops. Yes. Amen. And it never will. Live by faith. Amen. Well, what about when I get to heaven? You'll still live by faith. What about eternity? We'll still live by faith. Now, it's going to be a lot easier then. But we need to add to our, our faith. And the way God showed me that years ago, this is number seven. Faith, your faith needs to be supported. It needs to have the support to hold it up and, and allow it to work. All right? So we've got these seven things. Seven is the number of completion. So if we do these things, our life with God will be complete. Yes. Amen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the seven, there are seven things he says to use to support your faith. So if we'll do that, if we'll add to our faith and support our faith, our faith will be complete. Amen? Look what he says, add to your faith virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. All of this leads to a successful Christian life. Now, verse 8. And if these things yeah. be in you and abound, what things? Your identity, your faith, the knowledge that God is right, grace and peace, Life and godliness, the divine nature of God, and if all these other things, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity are all in you and abound, they make you that you're, you'll neither, you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why would that be? Because all of it is based on the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It comes to us through that knowledge. So I would think it would be beneficial for us to have that knowledge. Amen? Now, verse 9. But he that lacks these things is blind cannot see afar off and has forgotten forgotten that he has been purged from his old sins I am amazed that people are running into today in the church 
who absolutely refuse to let go of their past sins. Oh, I'm just so unworthy. I just don't deserve anything from God. After all, I've done this and I've done that. And I've... Folks, when you got born again, your slate was wiped clean. The blood of Jesus was spilled upon the pages of your sins of the past. And nobody and nothing can read them anymore. They are buried under that blood and wiped out as if that never existed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My, my, my. Well, what about after I get born again? See, I always got those kind. Okay. God gave us an avenue of repentance. Repentance is not penance. Repentance is going before God and saying, God, I messed up. Forgive me. Well, what a lesson we went through this morning in our Bible study back there. I, all I can say is, folks, that's a Bible study we're doing back there. Amen. In the morning before we come in here. <coughs> and Kenneth and Bill teaching that. And, and teaching that, look, folks, as far as your sins are concerned, you don't have a past. We got to get rid of the sin consciousness. And that's where the righteousness of God comes in because we replace the sin consciousness with a righteousness consciousness. Amen. In other words, I'm thinking about the right things because God is right. Amen. And God is in me and the Holy Spirit's in me. And Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. And he will lead me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen? So, verse 10. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence. Give a full effort, effort to make your calling and election sure. Go back up to verse 3, the very end of it. We are all called to God's glory and virtue. Every one of us is called to the glory and virtue of God. The glory is God's finished product. The virtue is how we get to that finished product through his moral excellence that's in us and the power of the anointing. It's all a blessing. Folks, we don't have to walk around sick. We don't have to be broke financially. And we don't have to have trouble in our relationships. Why? Because of moral excellency, the anointing, the blessing of God that we walk in. Now watch this. Make a calling and election sure. For if you do these things. Now who's got to do all the things we just read? Shall be. <laughs> me. I got something to do. Hallelujah. So, anybody here need anything else to do? <laughs> well, you got something. And quite frankly, folks, when we determine that faith is precious, when we determine it's got value, when we determine that God's word is precious and it has value, then we will start to change our priorities. Yeah. Hello. We don't try to fit God into our schedule. I had one lady years ago call me on the phone. She says, I'm not coming back to the church. I says, how come? Because your services don't fit into our schedule. I'm serious. Wow. 
And unfortunately, I have heard and seen some things about this family. Husband and wife are divorced. The children are scattered. But God, they didn't have time for God in their schedule. We don't take time. We make time. Let me say that again. We don't take time for God. We make time for God. <clears throat> if you do these things, you shall never fall. What a promise. So let me ask you a question. Are you tired of falling? Are you fed up with falling?
to the anointed word of God. Now let me back up into this a little bit. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 12 says the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Look, God doesn't care whether you're a homosexual, a, a transvestite, a, a prostitute, a drug addict, an alcoholic. He doesn't care what you've been. Call on him. He's rich to those who call on him. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him who they have not believed? How shall they believe in him who they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Now listen to verse 15. How shall they preach? Except they be sent. So now talking about being sent by a denominational headquarters. We're talking about those who have been sent by God. I want somebody standing in this pulpit talking uh, who has been sent by God. Amen. Because they'll listen to God and they'll present to us what God has said. I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, God has told me to be at the church. That one guy downtown one time stopped me. He says, God has told me to be at your church. I said, really? Yes, I have a message for your church. I said, what's the message? Well, I can't tell you until I get there. I said, I'm the pastor of the church. What's the message? Then I asked him, what church are you talking about? He didn't even know. I want somebody up here who's been sent by God. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Okay, Pastor, how do we know that they've been sent by God? Check their feet. <laughs> All right, I'll move on. <laughs> but, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, the more we hear God's covenant words, the more faith comes to our hearts. Now, Peter said it different. Here, faith comes by hearing. Faith always comes, but Peter said something different. I was talking to Larry a couple of weeks ago about this. I said, Larry, this verse tells us something different. We're to obtain faith. Yes. So let me give you Webster's Dictionary, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, definition of obtain, using it to obtain faith. To hold on to your faith. To be established in the practice of faith. To prevail. To succeed by faith. To gain possession of God's faith. I like that, but I like this last one. Some of you may not like this last one. To acquire through exertion, effort, and work. To acquire faith through exertion, effort, and work. Folks, faith comes, but we've got to obtain that faith that has come. We've got to acquire it. We've got to keep it. We've got to establish it if we want to prevail. So, there's a process as I sat down with the Lord here, and I did this a couple of weeks ago. All right, Lord, I want a process for us to obtain faith. So here it is. It's a threefold or three-step process. Number one, hear God's word. Number two, through personal study. And number three, through meditation. Of God's word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Faith comes 
if I hear it. We, we hear preaching, we hear it on CDs, or we hear it on DVDs, or on TV, whatever. We hear preaching. Faith comes if they're preaching the truth. But now for us to obtain it, we're going to have to hear God's word. Mark 4.24 said, take heed what you hear. Yeah. But Luke put it this way in Luke 8.18, 8, take heed therefore how you hear it. How you hear it. Right. We got to really know what we're hearing. But then we've got to put forth our effort on how we hear it. How are you hearing today? How's your attention span? How's your listening today? What's on your mind here today? Let's see. Uh, come on, Pastor, it's noon. Could you come on? Uh, I've had people call me a long-winded preacher. I looked it up in the Bible. I ain't even close. <laughs> when I preach longer than Jesus, I'll be a long-winded preacher. And Jesus would start when the sun came up and stop preaching when the sun went down. God's word when you hear it. Proverbs 4.20 from the Amplified Classic Version says, My son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. In other words, accept them. Are you accepting what God has said in this place this morning? Are you accepting this outline that Peter set out? I believe that's the way some guys say, well, you know, God has these many steps. And, but me, I'm an outline guy, so God said, here's the outline that Peter set up. Now I feel good about that. See, I'm in good company because Peter sets out an outline, and that works. Amen. <laughs> okay. Consent to those words, but submit to them as well. So here's my advice to you folks, here and out there, go to a good Bible-believing church. Yes, right. Not all churches are the same, folks. Number two, we obtain faith through our own personal study. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I say, well, I know this verse, yep. Yeah. And just like Peter, I'm here to stir it up in you. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. The understood subject here is you. You study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not be ashamed or disgraced. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Folks, if we have to rightly divide the word of truth, the word of truth can be wrongly divided. That's right. We gotta get it right. Amen. Yeah. Now, how do we do that? John 16, 13 says, The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, and He has spent, He has been sent to guide us into all the truth. Part of studying is Holy Spirit. I'm about to study here. Show me the truth. Yeah. Reveal the truth to me. When I go to church, we shouldn't be going to church without the guidance and the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Show me the truth there this morning. Hallelujah. And number three, and, and personally, this is my personal opinion. I think this third one is the most important. We obtain faith through meditation. We hear the word 
and a light shines in the darkness. We study the word, and that light is like a dawn. But when we meditate in the word, the day star arises in our heart. That's how Peter was telling us about this outline that he has put out there. So turn to Joshua 1a. Y'all right out there so far? Yeah. All right. This is, uh, folks, I'm telling you right now. Larry, you get ready. I think, I think you ought to go see Larry at the end of the service and say, Larry, I don't like a CD in this lesson this morning. I want to study it. We also put on the, uh, on the internet there on our website, oasisoflifeministries.com. We post the outlines. Larry posts that every Thursday. It's not always the one I preach, but it's the one I give him on Thursday. It's not his fault. Thank you. But what I'm going to do with this one, Larry, there's a few typos in what I'm looking at here, so I'm going to correct those. I'm going to give you this one, and tomorrow, if you would post this one on our website, okay? Leave that one that's there, but post this one as well. And why do we give you these? So you can go back and study these scriptures, and then meditate on these scriptures, and, and help us. I, I've got a book here in the front of this. There's 166 pages of outline, and I go through them all the time for my own personal study. And if I've got the CDs or the DVDs that, that back them up, I listen to them or watch them, and I take notes on it, but then I sit back and study those, or meditate on those scriptures. Yeah. Folks, it's the meditation that's going to bring the day star to our hearts. Water in the sea. Amen. Now, so we do this, Joshua 1 8. I didn't read that yet, did I? No. All right. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, don't stop speaking God's word. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall you make your way prosperous. And then you shall have good success. Yeah. How many want to have a, a successful life? Amen. 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 How many of want to get to the place where you never fall? Amen. Amen. I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to rose. You don't ever have to fall again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> she slipped on the ice this week. But she got up. Amen. And she's here. Now, Bill Winston and Dennis Burke have each written a small little book, and they're both outstanding. Bill Winston is Meditation, the Missing Link. And in his book, he says, Meditation is the Missing Link of Faith. I agree with him. Folks, both those books are available, and if you want a copy of those books, let us know. There again, see Larry, and he'll let me know, and we'll get you a copy of them. And any of those stuff, CDs, books, whatever you're coming to us for, look, if you can't give us a donation or money for those books, we don't charge, you can have them. We'll give them to you. We're a giving ministry. Our finance committee just went, huh? <laughs> We're a giving ministry, and we're going to give. Amen. Because I know when it's given unto them, it's given unto us, back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men should give into our bosom, but the measure we beat it out, it'll come back. And that's in any area of our life, not just financially. Now, meditation is a spiritual law, and it works. For anyone who will work it. Yeah. Dennis Burke in his book said it this way. To meditate is to fill your thoughts with the thoughts of God. To be consumed with the things God has said. Yeah. Amen. So let me give you a very simple 
biblical definition of meditation. Simply turning the word of God over in your heart until it produces revelation or spiritual insight. Just keep rolling over until that insight comes. But there's three levels of that insight, folks. And we're all looking for that last one. When faith is sealed in our heart and we've obtained it. We've secured it. We've acquired it. And, and I had somebody tell me a while back, well, God gave us all the faith we need in that measure of faith. And all you need is the faith of a little mustard seed and so on and so forth. Let me show you something that Paul said. How many of you believe Paul was under the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Yes. All right. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Chapter 3, verse 10. Paul, to the church of Thessalonica, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face. Paul wanted to come see them face to face for this purpose and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. So see, our faith could be lacking. Yeah. But Paul did get to Thessalonica he did preach, and look at the second letter, the first chapter, the third verse. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because that your faith grows exceedingly, and charity of every one of you all toward each other abounds. See, love goes with faith. It always does. Faith works by love. So, meditation is one of the greatest keys to us obtaining an understanding of God's truth to build faith in God and build faith in his covenant words. Now, we'll finish up with this. Faith is precious, yes, but it's precious because it's based on the word of God. So the word of God has to become precious to us. Yeah. It has to become of value to us. The truth of God's word is more than just fact. It is a truth that builds faith within us. Now, the truth of God's word is alive. It's creative. It's life-changing. Hebrews 4.12 The word of God is Quick, it's alive, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So the Word of God is very much alive and creative for us. Hearing, meditation, and study are not intended to be merely produce more knowledge, but also to give an understanding of God's ways, God's words, which are always the right way. I'm just giving you things as I, as I wrote them down that I mean, there was a couple of times I had to stop the Lord and say, wait a minute, hold up. And put him on pause for a minute while I catch up because I don't take shorthand. <laughs> Psalm 119.99 from the Passion Bible. You have given me more understanding than those who teach me. Wow. You have given me more understanding, Father, than those who teach me. See, we've got the anointing to understand the Word of God beyond whatever I'm teaching you or anybody else is teaching you. Psalm 119, 130, again from the Passion Bible. Break open your word within me until revelation light shines out. Those open hearts, those with open hearts are given insight into your past. Yes. When our hearts are open to the truth of the word of God, God will open up a pathway and shine brightly his light on it so we see the path we're to take as we're seeing here this morning. We're seeing a path we need to take. The purpose of hearing, study, and meditation is to put us into a position of doing God's word. 
Turn to James chapter 1. I'm just about finished, Nelson. Are you enjoying this this morning? Amen. I've been through it several times, and each time I see something more to it. Yeah. That first outline I sent to Larry on Thursday, I told him, we're going to be here all day if I preach that whole thing. Well, Pastor, we're here almost all day anyway. Yeah, all right. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. If we come to church and all we do is hear the word and leave and don't ever do anything with it, we've deceived ourselves. If we study the word and do nothing with it, we've deceived ourselves. We've got to become doers of the word. See, God's word is truth. And God's word is the right thing to do. It's righteous. John 17, 17. We are sanctified by the word, set apart, set in order. And then Jesus said this, God, your word is truth. So we rightly divide the word of truth in its rightful place in our lives, and then we do it. Well, let me finish this up. When you see the righteousness in God's covenant word, you give his covenant word more value. When you see it's truth and you see it's righteous, you'll give it more value. When God's covenant words have more value to you, you will give God's covenant word more time and effort. The more you value something, the more effort you give it. I don't know too many people, and I haven't known too many people now through the years, who go to work because they enjoy it. They go to work and spend the time and effort there because they value it. What do they value? That paycheck that comes at the end of the week. How much value do you give to God's work? The more value we give to it, the more time and effort we'll put into it. And when you apply God's covenant word to everyday life, you will make your way successful. Yes. Amen. You get anything out of us this morning? Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. The anointing's been here; it's still here, and the anointing is flowing to you. And again, I, I would strongly encourage you. You can go into uh, our website at oasisoflifeministries.com. There's a little button there that says YouTube. Press that button. It'll take you right to the Oasis of Life site on YouTube. And all the messages are there. This one will be there, what, Larry, about Thursday this week? Yeah. Uh, usually, he usually, he's got some things he's got to do with it before he puts it on there. That man does more behind the scenes than you have any idea what he does. He's been a blessing to me, and I appreciate it. And you are a blessing to me, and all of you here are a blessing to me. And I appreciate it. I hope this morning I've been a blessing to you. Yes, you have. May the Lord's healing come where it's needed right now. Those who are here, those who are out there, there's a sickness or a disease attacking your body right now. I command it in the name of Jesus to loose its grip. Go from that person, go from that place, and leave them alone. Let them be healed by the blood of Jesus and the word of their testimony right now. And Father, we thank you for it. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. I love you. God bless you. Nelson, hold up before you.